Hello, mathematicians. Today's video is on solving uh, tax markup and discount problems. So our objective for today is students will be able to solve tax markup and discount problems. Go ahead and copy down the objective, Press the video, uh, pause on the video if you need to, and then press play when you're ready. All right, so we're doing objective 116B, and you've probably learned um, in your previous math classes how to solve problems that involve tax, discount, percent, um, markup, and we're going to talk about a method that, that is really helpful because it allows us to kind of do many steps at once, and we can use this method to do tax, discount, and markup, all different kinds of things that can apply to items. While we go through these problems, just as a reminder, please make sure that you're using cups. It's really important that we're using a reading strategy as we read. So remember, we want to circle the question. We want to underline important information. We want to pick the correct operations. And we want to solve our problem. And also have a sanity check at the end to make sure that our answer seems reasonable. And especially with these problems that have to do with money, because our answers should see, sound and get an answer that is reasonable. So the first thing I'm going to do as I read it, I'm going to use cups. Go ahead and zoom in on this question for us. So we have that Shantanese is buying a t-shirt at the mall. The t-shirt costs $20. There's a 5% tax. What is the tax on the t-shirt? Okay. Now, tax. Let's first kind of clarify what some different words mean. And I'm going to write something up to the bottom of our paper. These words mean that we should add money. These words mean that money, the, the price of our item is going to become larger. Words like tax. Markup. Tip. Those words mean that the amount of money that we're paying is going to get bigger. These words mean dis, uh, subtract, okay? meaning that the amount of money we're going to pay is going to be get smaller. So words that mean that we should be subtracting are discount, sale, or coupon. Okay. And all of us are consumers. All of us have bought something at a store before. So you guys, these words should kind of resonate with you. Oh, I have bought something on sale before, and that means that the price gets lower. We should be subtracting. Or, yes, when I go to the store, it might cost $5, but I have to pay tax, and that's additional money I have to pay, so that means we're adding. So this is a percent problem that involves taking um, tax, tip, markup, something like that as a percent and applying it to our item. And that should be a signal to us that we're going to use um, we're going to use this method. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up a proportion. And in that proportion, I'm going to have two things. I'm going to have my original prices. And I'm going to have my new prices. Also, in my setup, I'm going to have two columns, per se. I'm going to have my percent column. And I'm going to have my money column. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set up my proportion. So I'm going to have two fractions with an equal sign in the middle, and I'm going to leave them blank for right now. Let's fill out the original first. Our shirt costs $20, so our original cost of our shirt is $20. Now that shirt, is that's what it costs. It is no discount, it has no additional thing added onto it, so it is 100%. Okay, That's its original cost, it's 100%. The new percentage is going to be what we apply with the 5% tax. Now tax, that's something that we need to add. So instead of my shirt being 100%, it's actually going to be a little bit more than 100% because we need to apply 5% tax. And I know tax is something we need to add. So I'm going to say, okay, my 100% from my original, okay, I'm taking this one right here, my 100% plus my 5% tax. So this is my original and this is my tax. So 100 plus 5, that gives me 105. So my new percentage is 105. Now, what we're trying to figure out is the tax on the t-shirt, 
But we also need to know, well, what's the t-shirt going to cost? I don't know what the new t-shirt is going to cost because I have to apply my tax. So my money for my new is going to be X. Once we've set up our proportion, we're going to cross multiply. So we're going to multiply 100 times X, 20 times 105. So that's going to look like this. We'll have 105 times 20 equals 100 times X. Draw my line down the middle. 105 times 20, that gives me 2100. Zero, zero. 100 times X gives me 100X. Now I need to solve for X. So what's happening right now between 100 and X? They're being multiplied. If I draw a quick do and undo box, we're timesing by 100. So how do I undo that? I'm going to divide by 100. So I'm going to divide the right side by 100. Divide the left side by 100. 2,100 divided by 100 is $21. 100x divided by 100 is 100 cancels out. I'm left with x. So x equals $21. Now, what that means is that the final price, the final price of our shirt after 5% tax is going to be $21. Now, if I was a student and I wasn't using cups and I answered $21, would my answer be correct? No. My answer wouldn't be correct because if we come back up to our question, it's asking us what is the tax on the t-shirt? Well, if our final price is $21, and I'm going to do this right here, if our final price is $21 and we paid $20, 21 times minus 20 is $1. So our tax on the shirt, our tax on the shirt is one dollar. So this is our answer. Our answer is one dollar. Tax is one dollar. Cool. So we have Isaiah is buying a new video game at the mall. The video game costs forty dollars. There is six point five percent tax. What is the final price of the video game Rounded to the nearest dollar. Interesting. Rounded to the nearest dollar. Okay. We better star this. Okay. We've talked a lot about how using cups is really important. we got to remember that our final answer needs to be rounded. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to set up my proportion. I'm going to have original. And I'm going to shorten the word original to O-R-G. Original over new. We're going to have our percent in our first column and our dollar amount in our second column. Let's go ahead and I'll set up our proportion. Zoom in a little bit on that. All right. So our video game costs $40. Its original price was $40. At $40, that video game is 100%. It's not taxed. It's not discounted. It's at 100%. We have 6.5% tax, which I know means I need to add. So I'm going to take 100, which is my original percent plus 6.5, which is my tax. So my new percentage is 106.5. I want to know what the new cost of the video game is, and that's going to be my x. Now I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. 100 times x, 40 times 106.5. So I'm going to have 100 times x. That's equal to... 40 times 106.5. 100 times x, that gives me 100x. 40 times 106.5, that gives me 4,260. Now I need to solve for x. If I draw a quick do and undo box, what's happening between 100 and x? They're being multiplied. So to undo that, I'm going to divide. I'm going to divide both sides by 100. These cancel out. I'm left with x equals 
and 60 cents. So, what's the final price of my video game? The final price is $42 and 60 cents. Now, just so we get the practice in, let's figure out what the tax would be. Remember tax, we're going to take the new price, 4260, and we're going to subtract the old price, $40, so our tax is $2.60. Now, are we done with this problem? No, we're not. We still have to round to the nearest dollar. But let's take some quick notes on the side about what it means when they ask you to round to the nearest dollar and what it asks what it means when they ask you to round to the nearest cent. So let's talk about rounding to the a dollar. Rounding to the nearest dollar. Dollar means the ones place. If it asks you to round to the nearest dollar, you're going to round to the ones place. So for example, if you had something like $26.30 and we said underline to the nearest dollar, we would underline the ones place, draw an arrow next door, ask that number, are you greater than four? It says no, so our six is going to stay the same, so our answer would be $26. If a question asks you to round to the nearest cent, round to the nearest cent, okay? Cent is going to mean the hundredths place. The hundredths, with the THS on the end. Now that makes sense, right? Because after our decimal point, if we're looking at a dollar amount or a, a price, we have two numbers after our decimal point. So for example, if we took 26 301, okay? And they said round to the nearest cent, we'd have to say, oh, I'm going to go to the hundreds place. I'm going to draw an arrow next door. Ask that number, are you greater than four? And we get $26.30. So nearest dollar, that's going to be the ones place. Nearest cent, that's going to be um, the hundreds place. So going up to this question, um, back up here, number two, it asks us to round to the nearest dollar. So let's go ahead and take our 4260. I'm going to underline the ones place, draw an arrow next door. That number is greater than 4, so my 2 is going to round up to a 3. My 4 is going to stay the same. Everything after becomes 0. So my price of my video game rounded to the nearest dollar is $43. All right, I want you to go ahead and try two of these. So go ahead and try number three right here and number one down here. I want you to try those two. Go ahead and pause the video when you're ready, plus uh, play, and you can see the answers. All right, let's quickly go over the answers to three and one. Okay, this is for number three. You should have set your proportion up like this. When you cross multiplied, you should have ended up that x was equal to $7.56. Now, I just want to point out, this question said round to the nearest cent, and you're saying, well, do I need to round then? What was happening? Remember, go to the hundreds place, draw an arrow next door. There is no number there. We could put a number there, and that number would be 0, but if we round to 0, it's still going to stand the same. So your answer should have been that the final price of the nail polish rounded to the nearest cent was $7.56 and the tax on your nail polish should have been 56 cents. Remember we're taking the new price, $7.56, and we're subtracting from it the old price. On this one down here, number one, when you cross multiply, you should have gotten uh, that the price of the new football was $54. Now this question is asking what is the tax on the gear? You have to make sure you are using cups. If you answered 54, that would be incorrect because that's the final price. To find our tax, we're going to do our new price, 54, minus our old price. So the tax is $4. Your answer should have been $4. All right, let's go on to another kind of problem we might see. And that's okay, so go ahead. We're going to go to where it says problems involving markup. All right. Now, we're not going to solve these any differently, but I do want to address with you the concept of markup. 
So let's go ahead and let's read this question. It says, uh, Shantanisa is buying a t-shirt in New York City. The t-shirt costs $20 wholesale. The shop marks the t-shirts up for 10%. What is the final price of the t-shirt rounded to the nearest cent? We got to pay attention to that rounded to the nearest cent. Okay, let's talk about what wholesale means for a second. When you go to a store and they sell you an item, before they sell you that item, the store has bought that item themselves. Okay, and that, they buy that item wholesale. So, for example, when Nike buys its tennis shoes, they might go to the person that makes the tennis shoes and they'll say, I'm going to buy 100 pairs of tennis shoes for $10 each, and then they sell those tennis shoes to you for $100, which means they make money on the tennis shoes. That's called wholesale. It's when the store buys the T-shirts at one price but then sells them to you at another. And when they sell them to you, they do something called markup, okay? So wholesale, just so we have a, a definition written down, is the price the store pays, the money the store pays. Mark, mark up or marks means the money that they're adding in. So markup is going to tell us that this is money that is added. So let's go ahead and set this one up. We're going to have our original over our new. We have our percent and our money. Set up my proportion. So our shirt originally, when they bought it wholesale, it was at 100% of its value. It costs $20. The store is going to mark it up for 10%. So if our old percent was 100, we're going to mark it up 10%. That means we're going to add 10%. Our new percent is 110. And we need to find out our original or our new our new price our x so now let's go ahead and let's cross multiply 100 times x 120 times 10 or 110 times 20 excuse me so we have 100 times x equals 110 times 20 100 times x is 100 x 110 times 20 gives us 2200 we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by x. And we get that x equals $22. $22, okay? Our new, our final price of this shirt, the store is going to sell it for $20. Now, the question asked us to round to the nearest cent. Okay, this is an instance again where you really don't have to round, right? A cent would be the hundredth place. And I could rewrite this price as either $22 with 22.00, or I could rewrite it as 22. Either way, this is the same price. So although the question asks us to round, we don't have to do any rounding because our price is already rounded to the nearest dollar. If we were to underline our hundreds place here and draw an arrow next door, it would just be another zero and it would stay 22. So our price is $22. Okay. So I want you guys to go ahead and I want you to try examples two and three. For both of these examples, I want you to not only find the price, so put a little line on here, I want you to find the final price, but I also want you to tell me what the markup is, okay? And you can find markup the same way we were finding tax. So for both of these, tell me what the final price is, but also tell me what is the markup. Okay, go ahead and pause the video. When you're ready, press play and you can see the answers. All right, here are your answers. So for number two, you should have had a markup of $4.05, a final price of $31.05. For number three, you should have had a markup of $0.70 cents and a final price of $14.70. Let's talk about this one real quick because when you divided and you got your final price, you probably got that X was 14.7, okay? Now, this right here, 14.7, that is not a dollar amount. I want you to think about, have you ever gone to a store and seen something that costs $14.07? No, right? We need to have two, decim two places after the decimal. That's what makes something a dollar amount. So if you ever end up with an answer like this, where you have only one number after the decimal point, you need to add a zero to make this a dollar amount. 
If you don't add that zero, it's going to be counted as wrong because 14.7 is not a dollar amount. We need to add a zero at the end to make it $14.70. Alright, now we're starting to get a hang of it. We're going to go over one more thing and that is... Okay, so go ahead to the next page. We're going to go over one problem that's about discount. Now, discount is actually the same process as tax and markup. It's just when we do discount, remember that's something that's taken off. That's subtracting. So it's going to be slightly different. So let's go ahead and use cups as we read. Sean Denise is buying a t-shirt. The t-shirt costs $20 wholesale. The shop is offering a 10% discount. What is the final price of the t-shirt? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set up my proportion. Original over new. Here's my percent. Here's my dollar amount. So my shirt originally costs $20, which is 100% of its value. Now my shirt is at a 10% discount. So if my original percent was 100, it's 10% discounted, meaning we are going to subtract 10%. My new percentage is 90%. So my shirt is now 90% of its original value. And I'm going to solve for the new cost. So I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply we'll have 100 times x equals 90 times 20. Okay, 100 times x gives me 100x. 90 times 20, <clears throat> excuse me, 90 times 20, that gives me 1800 or 1800. I need to solve for x, and x is being multiplied by 100, so I'm gonna divide by 100. So x equals $18. So what is the final price of my shirt? It is $18. Now, what if I asked you, what was the discount on your shirt? How much money was taken off? Okay, normally we would do the new price minus the old. Now, our new price is cheaper, so we're going to have to do our old price, which was $20, minus our new price, which is $18, and that means our discount was $2. But our final price is $18. All right, we'll do one more of these together, and then I'll kind of set you loose to try on your own. Okay, one store sells PJs, pajamas, at $27. Another store sells pajamas for 15% less. What is the price at the other store? So I'm going to go ahead and set up my proportion. We'll have original over new. Our percent, our money, our original price was $27, and it's at 100% of its value. Our new store is going to sell it for 15% less, so 100% minus 15, that's going to give us a new percent of 85%. And I'm going to go ahead and solve for X. So I'm going to cross multiply. 100 times x is going to be equal to 27 times 85, which is 2,295. 100x is going to be equal to 2,295. And let's actually write so that we can see our work up here put that in the wrong spot. We're doing 85 times 27 here. Now I need to solve for x. I'm going to divide by 100. Divide by 100. So x is going to be equal to 2,295 divided by 100. That gives me $22.95. And notice on my answers, I'm putting dollar signs in front of all my answers because we want to have units when we do, when we write our final answer. Okay, let's do this. So on the next page, I want you to try and do, actually let's do three. Okay, these four and five are a little bit challenging, but go ahead and try them. I want you to try three, four, and five. Go ahead, pause the video, 
and press play when you're ready. All right, so for number three, you should have gotten $13.30. Remember, you should have added that zero in on the end because when you calculated, you would have gotten 13.3. We need to add in that zero to make it a dollar amount. I want to quickly set up four and five with you because these are a little bit confusing. Derek is buying a new football gear at Sports Authority. Sports Authority charges 20% less than Walmart. If Walmart charges 50 what is the price at Sports Authority rounded to the nearest dollar? So when we set up our proportion here, our original cost is 100. We're solving for X, um, 100%, excuse me, and our, our price was 50. Now, Walmart charges 50, so this is Walmart's price here. And Sports Authority charges 20% less than Walmart, so we're still going to subtract that. Because this is Walmart's price, and Sports Authority charges 20% less, by doing 100 minus 20, we can get the price for Walmart, um, for, excuse me, for Sports Authority, because we know that Sports Authority charges less than Walmart. So our proportions should have been set up as 100 over 80 equals 50 over X, and you should have gotten, when you did uh, 80 times... 50 divided by 100, you should have gotten $40. And there was no round, we said to round to the nearest dollar, but that was already rounded for us. Five is similar. So, uh, say I was buying a new video game in New York City. In Gary, the video game costs $40. New York sells it for a 15% discount. What is the price of the video game in New York City? Rounded to the nearest cent. So we're going to go ahead and set up a proportion. It should have looked like 100 equals 40, 100 over uh, 85 equals 40 over X. Okay, remember, Gary and Gary costs 40, and New York sells it at a 15% discount, so we're going to take the discount off of here, and we should have gotten that the video game was $34, and it said to round to the nearest cent, but our answer was already $34, so we didn't have to do any rounding. All right, that is the end of our video. Go ahead and write down any questions you might have. We will practice this when you get to class and come to class ready to uh, learn.